Uh, I expect that what you want to achieve is when people come here, you want to give them a jab in the arm, you know, not like a dose of COVID uh, vaccine anyway, a proper jab that gets them going to say, okay, let's go out there and conquer, you know. So I'm, I'm hoping that my own discussion would actually get you a little bit more jabbed up. Um, so to a large extent, um, when I speak with people, um, yeah, I try to achieve a certain kind of impact, um, you know, beyond uh, what they are used to ordinarily. So the only uh, research I did, I just did it now, and I said, okay, how do you mentor someone? So because I saw there's this bit about mentorship. So I think this is well, there's a, okay, welcome to my God Mentorship Club. Now, a lot of people actually come to me and say, oh, sir, I want you to be my mentor. I'm like, me, I'm still looking for a mentor myself. You know, so I don't know what you mean. How, how, how do people become people's mentor? Does it mean that before you mentor someone, you are saying that you've achieved maybe almost everything you want in life yourself? Now, if I think about what I want in life, hmm, it isn't much, but it's difficult. And to a large extent, perhaps it's something that, you know, one will just keep struggling until you close your eyes finally. If it's, if it's, I don't want money, I don't want that much. I, I probably don't want to be Dangote. You know, I think some of you here would like to be like Dangote. My friend uh, Mevon is on his way to being a Dangote. But I'm not sure I, I, I'm not sure I uh, would have that capacity to manage so much in terms of financial resources. And, you know, a lot of worries. Because for me, I want a bit of time to be able to think, to write, to influence, you know, people. Uh, for example, if you look at my trajectory as I'm standing here, I write columns for four newspapers every week. The Economy, Daily Trust, Premium Times, Alvin Report. And quite a number of people also pick it up. They pick up my article, they share it everywhere. Um, and of course, I also go on TV. You know, these days I try to run away from them. They keep calling me, see if I just called while you were in there. You know, channels, AIT and so on. Though it helped me, um, it helped me when I was running for president. I was able to walk into any of these places and say what I wanted to say because I'd already made friends with them. Someone like Nancy uh, Ilo of AIT, when she came to this town newly, didn't know anyone. She, we had just, uh, you know, left working with, uh, um, um, uh, what's this tall guy's name now? The tall guy is back on the rise now. Uh, we were together just last week, and I forget his name. Uh, Bosin, Bosin Amofai. And so she was new, and for some reason, someone gave her my number, and I was able to assist her to populate the people that come on our show. It's very difficult getting people to come on those shows, you know, and so on. Um, so I'm doing, I'm doing that. But recently also, by Monday, I'm going to be starting a pilot program to present a show on TV myself. You know, so I'm going to be presenting this political economic show and a bit of business and finance as well, you know. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I got my PhD last year, finally, after five years of struggle. I almost abandoned the thing, you know. Uh, it's much your drama. Thank you very much. One university in the U.S. called Walden, where you have to actually teach yourself. It's a different ballgame entirely. You have to teach yourself because nobody's going to feed you. And, um, you know, and I'm looking for an appointment to teach. I just want to teach uh, the little I know, you know, and, um, yeah. I see myself as an economist, okay? So more than anything else, even though that's my BSc, my master's is in what they call financial markets and derivatives because I was just coming out of the banking industry then. I wanted to do, uh, in other places, they call it high finance. Those kind of financing, they're not too common in Nigeria. Well, that's why I went to learn in London. And of course, the PhD is on public policy and analysis. You know, so that's just by way of introduction. So I'm not sure um, if you would want to follow me. Mm, I think you want to follow those who know how to make the money. You know, and some of them may not be here as well. You know, However, what I've seen in life is that um, of, you know, in many instances, when people chase the money and they actually get the money, the, the hollowness is still there. 
Uh, you know, the hollowness is still there about what do I do with life, you know. I, I mean, one of the biggest paradoxes I see is a scenario where someone makes a lot of money and is still unhappy. And I'm wondering, so what's the essence? I mean, I'm talking about bosses that I probably have worked with some of them in the past. They're always screaming at their subordinates, you know, shouting, they're always angry. You lose 10 naira, they sack you, they sack you, right? You didn't come to work on time, they sack you, they're always screaming. Some of them, they're cursing people's mothers, they're cursing people's fathers. They keep you in front, like, I mean, I used to be in the banking industry, in what they call NPRs. And then they wash you down. They say some very terrible things to you. If I begin to tell you some of it, you leave your mouth agape. In fact, okay, just last week there was this guy who was uh, dragged on Twitter. Uh, one of the, does anybody know about that incident? Horrible bosses. Yes. You know the guy, what's his name? There was one particular guy. He had to be asked to step down. Do you know his name? Yeah, yeah. Has beards, I think he's bald as well. You know these bald people like me, and sometimes they can have problems, you know? Sure. <laughs> you know, so you need to see the kind of things he was, you know, he tells us people. Official males, you're using expletives, you're calling people more for this one, that one, on an official mail. Of course, at the time that thing came out, even I was particularly very angry. I was one of those who retweeted, posted on Facebook, eventually, uh, the guy had to be asked to step down. Of course, it's his company, maybe uh, some of his board members. You know, so but it's a paradox for me because the essence of success ought to be happiness. Even in the in the in the in the American Constitution, which is I mean where we also draw our own to a large extent, they talk about the pursuit of happiness that is supposed to be a fundamental right of the human being. So the truth is that as well, all here, all of us Abuja people, living large, big boy, big girls, and so on. Chances are that some, a lot of people are in the village and that a damn sight happier than you. True, true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Just, it's what they call in American parlance. They're, they're just ghetto fabulous. You know, get, they live in their ghetto. You know, I mean, I'm not saying the village is a ghetto, you know, but it's called ghetto fabulous, you know? You know, you live in your own, you know, little abode. It's the village. This night, there's not going to be any light. Sometimes they still use the gas lamp and all of that, you know, they go in the bush, they catch their small animal, they get some yam there, they are okay, they are really okay. They are really okay. In fact, what we are also finding out lately is that after all that pursuit into Abuja, you want to have this in New York, that in Johannesburg, this one in London, that in Singapore, you know, those people who have really made it at that level also come back and want to see how they can live that kind of simple village life that I just discussed. I just described, you know. So, to a large extent, the pursuit of happiness. So, the only uh, research I did is how to mentor people. Because, um, you know, a lot of people, when they come, they say, oh, God, I want you to mentor me. Ah, oh, no, no. I don't understand what you're talking about. But, see, let me say this. Uh, me, I'm very content. I'm pretty much, I'm very happy. I'm really a very happy guy. You know, I, I joke around a lot. I laugh a lot, you know keep people around me a little bit happy and and I try and I'm all, I'm almost everywhere. So I mean for me to have run for the presidency in my country, I think it's an achievement, you That's know. Because it's not what anybody can do easily. Of course what I had to do to get to that point was I had to create my own political structure. I knew that if I went to APC or PDP, they would tell me to go and queue up. Maybe by the time it gets to my turn, I'll be 95 years old. You know, so I said, this one is a long shot. Let me create my own structure. Of course, it came with all of its own uh, issues, disappointments. But hey, at the end of the day, you know, I, I, I was heard. And because I was heard, you know, I get to go to, into places these days that I probably would not have been considered to go to if I hadn't struggled at that level. So I was noticed at that level, you know. So anyway, let me quickly look at this. So it says, how do you mentor someone? Number one, to ask questions. So I'm going to be asking a lot of questions. If you want to mentor someone, the first thing is to ask questions of them. So I'm going to be asking you guys a lot of questions. Of course, I probably would do a quick intro for everybody, know what to do. Very, very quick one, where you're from, what have you, you know. Um, I know that a few of you, I can see, a, lot, a few of you work with him, right? Uh, so maybe some don't work with you. 
right? So I'd like to know what's up with that, you know. So ask questions, all right? Number two, share ideas, okay? That's another thing you do. Ask a mentor, okay? So if you're going to, of course, you're going to have several mentors coming to meet you here, speak to you. Some have come before. Uh, so they're supposed to share ideas with you and share ideas, share, uh, um, you know, not only ideas, share perspective, you know. Um, you know, they, you say, they say people, mentees come to you as a mentor because what? They value your opinion. Now, opinions, I say opinions are like fingerprints. Everybody has a unique set of opinions. Even Siamese twins. You know what's called Siamese twins? Yes. And what are those Siamese twins? Identical. Conjoined. Not only, not only identical, they are joined. Some of them are two heads. They get, if you see, if they see them in Africa, you people with jack. People with jack bar, you know. I mean, you see someone all of a sudden has two heads. This one is speaking, this one is speaking. They are conjoined at the neck. The rest of their body is one. But because this guy looks here, and this one looks here, they have a different perspective. Not to talk of identical twins. They have totally different perspectives. So, opinions are like fingerprints. Everybody has a unique set. And that's one area where a lot of young people these days, they miss it. If I agree with Mevon on so many things, we support the same football club, um, you know, we belong to the same political party, we subscribe to the same ideas in economics, we, maybe both of us are liberal economists, we believe that, no, let me, and let me, let's go and make money, whatever, okay? No matter how we keep agreeing, there comes a point that we begin to diverge. How do we take it at that point? Many young Nigerians don't know how to diverge. They don't know how to manage opinions. And so something happens. Maybe, you know, maybe he loves Buhari and I say, man, that man is an old man, he's a time waster. And then we disagree on that. And many young people these days, they take malice because of that. That's a wrong way to live because no two people have exactly the same opinion. It's not been done. Everybody has a unique set. It's like a DNA, you know? That there's going to be something different about your opinion from mine that's going to make yours unique and mine unique. All right? So, because of value opinion. So, when you're asking people to come here because you value their opinion, it doesn't mean you have to agree with all of their opinions. They're going to be saying some things that you will not agree with. Yeah, you know, like, nah, this one, this one, just talking, you know? You know? You don't have to agree. It's fine. Okay? Now, number three says that you have to tell stories. So, hopefully, I'll be able to tell a few stories. You know, they said, you know, when you put um, an experience into stories, it kind of sticks more. Human beings like to hear stories, you know. I'm still learning, actually, the art of storytelling. To tell a story, and, you know, in a way that, you know, it will not be too long, too boring, you know, it will be just, you know, very concise, delivered, so that people keep remembering. Some of the people who have taught you different things in the past, or mentored you, some of the things you're going to remember about them are those stories that they spoke about, those stories they, they told. Dig deeper. So sometimes, number four says dig deeper. So sometimes you are going to be able to, you're going to have to challenge, okay, the mentee, which is you now, to take them deep and get them to think about stuff. Okay, think about it. For example, that's what we just did now with this time, Miss Twain story. Okay, think about it. Why are the perspectives different? I said, well, I said, this one is looking here, this one is looking there. So they want to cross the road. This one is looking on the right, this one is looking on the left. This one sees a white car and a blue bus coming. This one sees a red trailer and another green car coming. They've seen two different things. You know that the human brain is like the hard disk of a computer. You store all sorts of information there, right? And you know, actually, it's a lot more robust than a computer, hard disk. The amount of information you store in your brain, you are talking of terabytes actually, or more. I've, I, I think I saw it somewhere, I could actually Google it. I'll Google it before I go. The amount of information that you can store in your brain. There's no computer that has been invented that can carry the amount of information. And you'll be shocked how much you know. So forget it. Of course, there's this science that says, uh, that talks about whether, you know, Einstein, the most intelligent man of the 20th century, whether he used more than 10% of his brain capacity. Some say 5%. They say so much more. But I'm talking about 
the amount of data, you know, we're talking of data now, that gets written into your brain, you know. In those days when the computer is writing on the hard disk, you'll be hearing, it's making, it's making some kind of noise in there. Writing it. And it's exa the human brain work, works exactly like that computer. In fact, the truth is that the computer was developed after the human brain to model the human brain. That's why sometimes you meet someone on the road. Ah, you forget his name. I know this guy. Ah, what's his name? What's his name? Oh. <laughs> you forget about it. And then six hours later, pop, the information pops up because your brain was working. It was searching, booting. Searching for that information sometimes, you know. So respect that your brain, okay? Respect that your brain, all right? So dig deeper. Listen with compassion. A, a mentor must listen with compassion. So, you know, compassion means that you have to put yourself in your are their concerns. How can I be of assistance to this concern? You know, how can I put myself in your shoes? All right? And of course, that means that the mentor is not someone who believes he knows it all. Comes here and says, yeah, when I was this, when I was that. No, me, I'm not like that. I can't even get to be like that. Okay? Offer encouragement. Number six, offer encouragement to the mentee. All right? That means that some of the people who are here today, they need encouragement in one thing or the other. So it's a great thing that uh, my goal investment is doing by, you know, trying to mentor people bringing people from different walks of life to come and assist them, encourage them, okay? Uh, and number seven, it says making introductions, okay? Making introductions, okay? Uh, that means that a mentor, to really take that person to the next level, if you want to actually attach yourself to a mentor, you know, as you're going, somebody was just telling me a story now. Actually, by IDB, we were discussing something. I'm coming from my friend's office. Baldon uh, is the one that sells all these things and doing Balogo. And he was saying that, you know what IDB used to do when you go to see him sometimes? He doesn't have time. Stand up. What's your name? Church. Church, yeah. Church. Is it church here? Yeah? No, just, just, just church. church. Wow, amazing. <laughs> that the guy will just be going around with you, holding your hand. In that is mean, of course, he has an expansive. Um, premise is there, please sit down, church. You know, just, you know, he's, so he's talking to other people, he's holding your hand. They say, hey, my love, this is he's talking on phone, he's holding your hand. He, he probably doesn't have enough time to sit you down for 30 minutes and have a discussion with you. But he's holding your hand down. He does one thing. You begin to feel a personal connection with him. People are also looking and saying, man, this guy is connected. This one that you be is <laughs> holding his hand up and down, you know. So those are leaders, you know, they know how to, to, to actually, uh, it's all about managing people, people. So, well, the seventh point here says that yeah, the real proper mentorship program will introduce you to things, to people. For example, you guys have been introduced to me today. Yes. Maybe it comes to a point, we meet somewhere else, you say, oh, God, I was in that session. Oh, okay, okay, what can we do together? Mm, who knows? You know, that's it. It's about expanding your coast. I'm curious about knowing how much data human brain can hold. So let me Google it quickly. How much data the human brain can hold? So I mean, I'm, so for those who are still around there, maybe in 50 years time, a, a woman will need a boyfriend, even a husband. A man will need a, a girlfriend even a wife, because they're creating machines and robots that can do that for you. Everything you want, including, of course, babies will be made in a test tube. So they put the baby in a test tube, they put it in an incubator, you see the baby growing from embryo until it becomes a baby. Design a baby, in fact, you can design, you can tell them to design the baby the way you want. <laughs> they design it. Wow. Now, now, now that's the limit of their own science. Me, I don't want to be around when that begins to happen, actually. I'm, I, you know, I've, I've, I've done enough, you know, but, that, that's, but you know, whatever they're doing, the, the, the idea behind innovation, they take from the natural and begin to innovate. So they look at the human and say, how can we replicate this guy? You know, how can we do brain that is in his head? If we put it inside a machine, you know, how can it work together? So that thing, that's what they call machine learning, okay, these days. You hear about artificial intelligence, okay, and machine learning. 
So the artificial intelligence is just to describe the intelligence in a TV. So for example, uh, you have your, what's this one they speak to, Alicia, uh, Alicia. Alicia. those who use, uh, um, uh, what's it called? IPhone. iPhone, right? And there's another one, Siri. Siri is iPhone. Alisa is which one? For Android. No, no, not for Android. It's for this thing. It's just an artificial intelligence. Yeah. Alexa is for Amazon. For Amazon. And someone said, you know, that those are the two, that there are only two women that listen to men, which is Alisa and uh, Siri. Siri. Uh, the rest will argue with you and say, my friend, what do you mean? I so you can actually speak to this TV now and then it does something for you. You walk into this room and you say, uh, Alisa, turn on the AC, and it turns on the AC. That is artificial intelligence. I'm saying that intelligence, or, you know, like synthetic intelligence that's not human beings can begin to do things like a human being. Machine learning, okay, now means that you can train this machine to learn on its own. So you don't have to impute everything into it. So there's this like, you know, garbage in garbage that is what you type into this machine, the program, is there any programmer here? Yeah, programmer, okay? It's what you program into this machine that it can do. But you can also program the machine, and someone this guy looks like a robot of sorts, you know? <laughs> yes. you know what I'm but you can also program into this machine to learn on its own. As it's moving around, as it's seeing things, it's absorbing information, it's interpreting the information, the thing is interacting with what is already there, like a human brain, that's what we do. So as humans, that's what we do. What we do is we go around, we see things, we're learning every time. Every moment we're learning, we're absorbing. So I just, if there's anything I want to leave you here with today, is to let you know the capacity of your brain and what you can do. And the fact that, look, you can't even use 30% of that capacity. And you can achieve so much, okay? So it tells me here that um, uh, the memory capacity of a human brain, 2.5 million gigabytes. Now, it's, I'm not really sure that can be expressed in computer terminology now, 2.5 million gigabytes. How much is a terabyte? Who's the computer key here? Two one, or two, one or two, four gigabytes. Exactly. Now, one or two, four gigabytes is a terabyte. What's a petabyte? Is, uh, one or two four terabytes. One or two four ten. So what with two point five million, eh? What would two point five million gigabytes be? <laughs> I don't wow. know what it doesn't have a name. So that tells you how much the capacity of a human brain is. So please, eh, at this point, I want to know you all, man. Eh? You know, I want to know you guys a little bit. So I'll be nowhere to pick it up from, you know. So let's start from Mr. Church. Church who? Ojuatu. Huh? Yes. Church Ojuatu. Ojuatu? Yes, sir. Where in Nigeria is Ojuatu from? Uh, Abia State. Abia State? Yes. Sir. As I as as spell O J O? U J O A T U. Okay, U J O A T U. Ojuatu. Ojuatu. Oh, nice. Abia State. Where in Abia? Orienta. 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 Yes, yes. That means small Oweri. Yes, sir. Okay. Just at the boundary between oh, really? and, 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 and Imo State, State. Yes. Right. Have a seat. Thank, Thank you very you much. much. And uh, what, what, what did you study in school? Okay. Computer engineering. Okay. Are you practicing that now? Yes. Uh, actually, Programming or what? Uh, no programming. More like an IT. Okay. Software. Fantastic. Fantastic. Madam? You work with Michael, don't you? Yes, sir. Okay. My name is Ron. Who? Mamukuyo me. That's Ondo State. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah? Yes, sir. And Ondo Town? Idori. Idori, okay. Well, what did you study? Banker. Okay. Are you a banker? Yes, Where do you work? My God, okay. Nice to meet you. Mamukuyo me, what? Okay. There's only you guys in Idori, and Ondo that bear that name, so I should know. I'm a little bit versatile about Nigerian things, you know. Yeah. So. My name is Sam Okalo. Sam Carlo. Yes. Okay. I am a sound engineer. Sound engineer. You work with Michael too? No, I don't. Where do you work? Are you running your own business? Branches. Fantastic. Sam Carlo. Is that Abia too? Yes, that's Abia. Okay. There's a lot of Carlo in Abia. And then you probably find Carlo where again now. Some, some, maybe, where is one call from? Kano? 
It's an umbra. Okay, maybe they're yeah. all in scan. Yeah, you guys wear a lot of calories, man. Have you an emo? Arrow, yes. Are you Arrow? Yes, I am. Yeah, the Arrow. <laughs> nice one, nice one. I, I know a lot of people from that axis, you know. Arrow, into Abriba, into Ahafia, oh, okay. you know, that Bende, all that place, uh, Igbere, and so on. Okay. Yeah. And my first place, the first bank I worked, hmm. was owned by two, somehow. Well, not, you know, the visual art and then branding. That kind of goes together. So, so how do you keep this place together? You know, what, what's your vision for this? organization and how do you bring all of these talents together, which are top level talents? Okay, we present capacity. It's called that anybody could be anything. Because mm. I, have, I have a science background. Mm. So what I page into uh, consulting, basically by slapping on that consultants mm -hmm. when I became a consultant. So our vision is simple. We want to unless as many ideas as possible. And actually, if people find funding for these ideas and make sure the ideas come to uh, uh, reality. On the, on the long run, we as an organization, Micro Investment, want to provide these funds. We don't need any, we, we, we're working out to get to a third party to actually get funds for these people. But so far, we have been uh, helping people access funds from uh, major government intervention and the private uh, investors. But we're also working towards a, a dimension where we to fund uh, ideas both locally and abroad. Where do you see your company in five years? Okay, we should be listed in the stock exchange in five years. How about ten? In ten years, we should have offices in Los Angeles and Canada. Wonderful. Do you intend to uh, evolve this place into a financial institution? Yes, but uh, we, we are already on our way to setting up a financial institution, but not with the micro brand. We want yeah. to uh, split it to another brand. Okay. Uh, we'll call that one the uh, capital brand chairs. Capital branches. Branches. Yes, yeah, so we're working with other mm. partners to set that. Interest guys. Then later we send the property for a profit. Or we have them uh, liquidate the loan, run the property. Over time they will make our money back, we'll return it. And also we also look forward to getting a lot of uh, funds to also approach government organizations. That oh you want to build a hostel in your school, no need to use your funds. Let us do it for you. Then we make profit off the hostel. Um, over some time, we hand it over to you. Just like what they're trying to do with the toll gates that they're creating. You know, they actually got people to run, to build the structures mm -hmm. and manage it for 30 years. Then later transfer it back to the BOT, build all that. Yes, sir. Okay. So, yes, you see, that's all. I've done the part, uh, some of the parts that I should do as a mentor. You know, quote and unquote. Ordinarily speaking, I personally, uh, I I try to run away from people who say I should mentor them, not because I have any fundamental flaw, but I'm thinking, does that not mean that I'm saying that I've achieved all I want in life, or I'm there? Well, when I think about it, I wouldn't say I'm there proper, but yeah, I think I'm there too in a way because um, you know I've I've managed to. Um, I've managed to identify to a large extent what matters in life or what matters to me in life. A lot of people who, a lot of my friends who we started out together in Korea in 1992 in Lagos, some of them look up to me today even though they may be a lot richer than me. Uh, because I think I've dared to do some things that they haven't been able to do. Um, I think I also sought my independence very early because I walked between 1992 and 2005 and went out and said, listen, I'm not working for anybody anymore. Uh, so I went out for my master's in 2005, came back in 2006, set up my company, I started to run. I've been running that business now since 2006. This makes 16 years. You know, we've achieved some good things. We've done very, very, um, sometimes very big stuff. You know, and of course, we keep doing the small stuff in order to survive. So we, I started that company called Global Analytics in the UK. I um, co-opted one of my lecturers, Duncan Hughes, to set it up. He's like a consulting firm as well. And um, one of my lecturers, I, I, I worked with him. Uh, you know, in fact, the reason why I got to go to that university called 
London Metropolitan University. It's not particularly one of the best in the UK, but I wanted a, a particular course, which was that derivatives, uh, what they call financial derivative, high finance. And I wanted to do it right in the city of London in the financial center. Because I was leaving Nigeria as an experienced banker, quote unquote, I only wanted to know what they were doing abroad. And um, so I wanted to be in the city of London because I wanted to make friends. Um, you know, even though I'm much more of a relationship person today, but that time I was already beginning to think about relationships, you know, and what relationships can do to you. All the money you want to make in this life, okay, is in the relationships that you build. Very important. Mm -hmm. All the money you want to make, that's one of the lessons I've learned over time. All the money you want to make in this world depends on the relationships that you build. Value your relationships. Work on your relationships. You don't have to make it too obvious that you are in need for the money. Oh, you are giving them a gift over December, over Christmas, simply because of what you want to come and ask them. Forget it. Just be good to people and know the value of relationships, okay? You don't have to have too many friends, okay? Even the Bible says that woe unto the person, though that person that has too many friends. Say woe unto you. I wonder why. But when you think about it, when you have too many friends that are dragging you here, you know, they happen for that joint, they happen for this joint, you're busy running for one thing, you wouldn't have time to think. And you need time to think, okay? So I went to that university because I wanted to make friends in the city of London among the bankers in the city of London. I think I've managed to do that. There are two of them that I've kept to date, you know, that Duncan Hughes is there, among others anyway. But uh, my friend also, there's a guy called Bio, who we were in the banking sector here together. So when I was finishing my master's, I kept asking for, about this guy, where is Bio, where is Bio? I mean, he's a British boy, you know. Uh, then I said, well, he left Citibank, he left Citizens Bank, went to Citibank Nigeria, they moved him to Citibank in London. So I said, wow. So later I got to send him a mail, he replied, and today we do a lot of things together in that sector, whether in the financial sector, in the consulting sector, and so on. So that's the reason why I went to that uh, university. So we set up that business there, and then, of course, we came and set up in, in Nigeria. I said I wasn't working for anyone. I remember Tony Elumelu meeting me in, in the, at the door of the Hilton, because, of course, he was my boss in Standard Trust Bank. Uh, uh, you know, I worked in Standard Trust for two years. And I know that Tony always tries to get you back, you know. And when I told him what I wanted to do and what I was doing by then in 2006, even though it was very tough, okay, for me, getting to start, you know, it was a struggle, um, running everywhere, trying to get some business and so on. Um, you know, he said to me, you know what, that was how I started. Keep doing what you're doing. And I really appreciate him for that because for most other people who tell you, no, come back, come back. Come and take a GM. I'll give you a DGM or something like that. Just say, keep doing what you're doing. And I think it gives me my respect at that level. Um, you know, luckily I've maintained good relationship with people like him, like Kenneth Duzoka, who's the MD of UBA today, was my direct boss at some point in time. And they're great guys, you know. Uh, I've worked with a few people. I've worked with my Kadenuga as well. So I know how some of the billionaires in this country, their mindset, what they do, and all of that. You know, so uh, we've been around since 2006, and we've done some big things as well. Uh, you know, I, I was bold, you know, so one of the things you need to learn to do in life is be bold. See, um, I always was guided by one thing. The worst that can happen is <laughs> that you die or you, you, you lose your life or, or you walk into someone's office and they punch you in the eye, which will hardly happen, you know. Sometimes it's real, maybe randomly in a way. I remember there was one time when I was still in the bank and, you know, working with someone like Tony, he had taught us the art of cold calling. So cold calling is a scenario where you don't know anybody there, but you walk in and say, this is what you want. This is what you want. I mean, in those days, we're even selling a bad product. I mean, what do you sell in a bank? I mean, how many of them, how many banks are in Nigeria today? It's more now. That year 25 does not include Global's Bank, time, time, uh, time Providos. something, eh? Providos, 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 Providos Global's, uh, time, Arch. um, what's this one that starts with the T? Titan Arch. Trust, okay, Titan. 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 Taj Trust. Bank, um, um, there's this other one, okay, Taj Bank, there's Jais, eh? okay, yeah, fine, there's a Taj, there's Jais, there's even another one now, Premium Trust Bank, you haven't started seeing them, but they've licensed them, so, the banks are many. I think we we'll probably have about 32 banks in Nigeria today. Recently, they brought out, there was a news item that came out last week that says 
the number of banking bank accounts in Nigeria is now 161 million bank accounts. And that those bank accounts, they are more than the population of Ghana, Guinea, Senegal, and all of that put together, 11 countries. Why? Because, you know, they put it under pressure. Come out, you know, your brother gets uh, an appointment or your sister gets an appointment. Bro, I beg, don't let me open. They say they are chasing me. You will open the account. But you know, how many, how many accounts in you run? If you start waking up every day sharing all your money. So, we were selling a bad product that people don't need. They were just putting us under pressure in the banking sector, which they still do today, unfortunately. Okay? Just opening accounts anyhow. So, imagine if you were selling a better product, electrical engineering. That's why you can build a, a building without putting the electricity in there. So it depends on how much. So you can see, again, I'm, I'm trying to let you know, that most of you are selling a much better product than the product that are succeeding out there. If I could afford you, uh, let me say, gyro. 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 Is that a short form of something? No, sir. You say gyro. That's what I say. You say gyro. Eh? No, you say gyro. You know, the Yusuko stuff, I see the scene. <laughs> So you saw Jerry, you got Jerry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you so good? I'm a Joe. You're a Joe? Yeah, he's on. He's on. So wait, he's on. They call it he's on. No, he's on is the global. They call it he's on. Okay, he's on. I'm a Joe. Okay, yes. The what? Well, every Joe is on. Every Joe is on. Okay, I see. Jaru. 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 So I was saying that, what does Jaru mean? Let them do whatever they want. Yeah, ah, God, God. Can correct. <laughs> Jesus Christ. When I was saying it's so to at that time, he didn't tell you the meaning. He didn't tell you the meaning. Because the Isoko, he, they can correct. Actually, my wife is half Isoko. No, she's quarter Isoko. So her dad is, her uh, dad's dad is, um, so it's Isoko, Isoko, Kwale, uh, Shekiri, and Bini. You know, yeah, that's where I'm married from. So, you know, so if I could afford you, I guess you come and design my office like this. You're selling a great product. Okay? Branding. Fantastic product. Everybody needs it. You know, repositioning the brand from where it is to where it needs to get to. IT. IT. In, bros, yours is what? Sound engineer. Sound engineer. Sound engineer. So, for every concert, every clubhouse, every... They need you. Every TV station, every radio station. So all of you are selling. You have IT too. You know, photography. You no, know, we used to think that photography will disappear with all of these nice, nice phones. But in fact, you know, the photos I never used to take. Now is the time I'm going to do a few photo shoots. Sometimes maybe I wear a bow tie. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let me keep it. I want even when you, if you Google me now and take image, you see all my different different pictures of me. That it's all part of branding, okay? It's all part of the 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 um, you know your footprint on the internet. You know all of that matters. You know. So all of you here, what I've just said is that you're selling better products than the products that are succeeding. So why are those products that are not as good as what you're selling? Succeeding more than your own product, for example. You know, for example, why is my goal? You know, my goal, yes, why is he not already quoted on the exchange? Yes. Making all the money that he can make. Making all the impact. Being heard about everywhere, you know. So what it means is that the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. Okay? The biggest room, the largest room in the world is the room for improvement. The largest room in the world is a room for improvement. There's so much space for you to improve, to grow, to expand. There's so much you haven't done that you can still do. Okay, so I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the only thing you need to wake you up every morning. Knowing that, look, um, there's somebody else. The people you know, eh? They are so infinitesimal compared with people you don't know. Yes. Eh? The people you know, you haven't started knowing people. And we have said that most of your business, whatever it is you want in life, you have to get through people, relationships, human beings. Open your mouth and talk to people. Sometimes high, sometimes low. One of the things I've learned in business is that it's not always the big man that gets you what you want. Sure. You never know, sometimes somebody is a live wire. He's sitting down there looking like 
nobody. Or is it just the person that will introduce you to the next person, the next person, and before you know it, you are there. You know. Okay, so that's part of the things I've learned in business. You know, we've been around for 16 years. You know, I remember when we used to take people to, we would take people. We used to go to Bloomberg in London. I used to be very proud of that. I would go to London Metal Exchange. Sometimes we'll have some Nigerians coming over to London, you know, take them to Intercontinental Exchange. I was barging in there because maybe because I had studied there and, you know, I think I, when, when I was there, we went to Bloomberg as a student. So I could take people who are coming from CBN, from, from SEC, from uh, Federal Mortgage, and so I'd take them to some of those places boldly, you know, and, you know, we're, we're getting some good mileage from that, you know. So, uh, now, the, 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 perhaps the last thing I want to say, when am I supposed to finish? Let me just fast forward to the moment, okay, to say, what have I realized recently? I realized that now, I haven't, I haven't dug roots properly, been around the business, interacting with people over this number of years, now I don't have to also anymore. Oftentimes I sit down and they just call me. So, however, you need to be around that struggle. When I started working, and when I started my business, I used to operate as if I was running a bank with a mentality that I had, okay? Uh, in which case, I'm talking about the work ethic, you know, the work ethic and the discipline. Even till now is the way it is, right? What time do we close in the office? At least 6.30, 7, okay? The meal, meal, eh? Uh, some of them will come to me, oh God, there's no problem, you can go. I can't, I can't enslave them, you know, you know, I can't enslave anybody. But 6.30, standard, 7. In fact, it was worse because I've taken it easy. When we used to be in uh, Apo, when we used to be in uh, Jabi, it was worse. You know, but it was just the orientation I had. So when I see friends who can just go home at four, yeah, but well, it's better to work smart. But I think that the trick is to work smart and work hard at the same time. Yeah. So don't think about just working smart. Especially the young people of these days, they want to work smart only. No, you have to put in the time. So I used to have, and the person who will come and have a list of eight places I need to visit today. But I'm running from Ministry of Works, I'm running from Ministry of Finance, from there I need to get to BPE, from BPE I need to get to, uh, you know, God knows where, you know, pam, 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 I need to enter CBN, from there I need to see them in SEC, from there, eight every day. And then, so that to-do list is very important, especially when you're just starting your business. So you can tick off one, two, three, four. You may say you want to go to eight places, you get to the fourth place or the third place, and the man delays you for two hours. You are waiting to see the other. What do you do? You won't vex and go now. Sometimes, I remember when I went to see Schifaneni way back when he was Minister of Works. So what they do is, you know, they can keep me for three hours. At some point, they had this time, they would just tell everybody, come inside. Or sometimes when they are walking out another meeting, they see all of you waiting in the waiting room. And they decide, like, okay, yes, you, what do you want? 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 So, Sometimes you, you can't vex and go now. You have to just wait and see whether they're going to call you, you know. So, it is what it is. So, the, 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 the list works. Think about working hard and working smart at the same time. Okay? Yeah, so, in working smart, you're thinking about, this is your next meeting. When, are you, when am I going to get there? You have a particular thing you have in mind to get from that meeting, all right? You're not just going there to just talk. You must know what you want to achieve. And you must also be able to prioritize and say, hey, you know, would I rather be talking to this man about a 100,000 naira work or, or should I spend more time talking to this guy that I can potentially get 100 million from or 10 million from? Okay? Or there'll be times when you're not even getting anything from that person, but it's very important that you make that visit because. You are cementing a relationship, okay? In fact, one of the faults I have, okay, and I admit because, you know, like I said, everybody is work in progress. I never really used to attend people's events, like all these weekend events, the one day and all that. A lot gets done in those places. People really, I never knew that people really, because I know they celebrate everything. 
Birthday will come and go. I know they do birthday. I, my first birthday I ever did was when I turned 50. And my idea of my birthday, you know, was, or contrary to other people, I remember when my brother did his own 50 in, in Joss. You know, that kind of, you know, huge hall. Then they create this chair for you. Only you will sit down here. I ah, know, no, I can't do that. I can never be comfortable doing that. I'm better off, if you want me to be happy, I'm moving around serving people from table to table. We don't get beer, we don't get drink, we don't get this thing. Hey, I'm happy. I could be doing the birthday, I wear a t-shirt and jeans and moving around, that's me. So I never used to celebrate anything. But people really, really appreciate when you show up. They never forget. When you show up for what they're doing, whether they're child education, their wife's birthday, their parents' burial, they never forget. So, because that's our culture. It's part of that culture. I try to buck that culture, but in time I'm growing up to realize that, look, you cannot buck it. You cannot, you cannot ignore it. Okay? So that's one thing. So I'm saying that now, because I've invested in time, and I'm, well, I'm known in places, and some of my friends are also growing. They say there's a point you get to where your friends begin to be, you know, big man here, big man there. And that, that's like age 55. Most people actually make it at that age. Because all of a sudden, their friends are everywhere. So they say, you, come and be minister. You, you don't suffer. If you don't suffer at age, you don't be some DG somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So, so now I don't have to struggle anymore because, uh, to a large extent, in those days I would have, and I say that if you're still coming up, if you're not 50 years old, really like you're not as old as me, and I look at, uh, okay, maybe only two or three people are older than me. I got you that I mean. I'm 50. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, so if you are not 50 yet, don't rest on your hours. Keep on digging the roots and doing the hard work. Keep on doing the hard work. You know, everybody has 24 hours every day, depending on what you do with it. You cannot stretch it. Time. The most important resource. That's why I say time now money. Time now money. Ooh, time now money. Use your time. Do better things. You know, so all of us have the same 24 hours. Time is this money that when you spend it, you can't get it back again. You can't call it back again. Today, if today is gone, today is gone. You can't even live today again. You can't recover it. It's a very precious thing. Now, so it's not all your time that you're going to use to work. Some of your time you're going to use it to reboot. Even just saying that, okay, I want to get all of this, you know, off your phone sometimes. Especially the ladies. Sometimes off your phone. That thing drives you crazy. You don't know. You know there are very few normal people in Nigeria these days. So if you go on social media, you will see. People like that with the craze now. With the craze. You know, some people, you know, you see the kind of pranks that people are just playing on with this, the inside market like this. They just do like, see everybody <laughs> running up and down. <laughs> Nigeria are not normal again. Yeah. One guy inside the, inside the uh, traffic in Lagos. One old man was selling belts. He said, I have a one that said, he was filming the old man. He said, the belt's strong, so he said, oh, that's hard, the belt's strong. He said, eh, eh, eh. So he used his teeth and cut the belt and gave the man back, say, I see the belt now. The man used the belt to tie his neck. <laughs> and I said, the, oh, God, you must pay me today, you must pay me today. Of course, later he went and paid the man. You know, Nigeria, off that phone. Eh? Sorry, what's the name again? Chidima. Chidima. Do you off your phone at all? It's always on, but it's always on. How many phones do you have? I just one. Okay, oh, yeah, an exception. Jaru, do you off your phone? Yes, I do. And you're a nerd of sort anyway. You're a nerd of sort, eh? <laughs> just a minute. One of the guys is trying to call me. I got Chidi. I got Chidi. Sorry, please. I got Chidi. Yeah, bro, sorry. I, I'm inside a, a seminar of sort. Okay. Uh, let me see. They may have. It's 6.30. Ah, they've closed. They closed at what time? 5 o'clock today. What? Oh, so sorry. If I knew, I would have asked you to come a bit earlier. What about Monday? Yeah, but they usually open at 9 and close to 5 today. No, it's not that, that, that. You are in family worship. Um, you, it's the second turning on the left. After that, 
After AYM Shafa, if you are still coming up, now is the time to put in the work, to do all the struggle, to work smart and hard at the same time. Okay, prioritize your time, maximize and optimize your time and effort. Okay, always have your eye on the goal. And in time, you will find out a lot of things will fall into place for you. You won't have to struggle. Some things in life, there are no shortcuts. Okay? There are no shortcuts to some things in life. Don't be deceived. Alright? Sometimes, you just have to go through the whole hog fully. And um, I think that that's where I want to close my talk today. It's almost 7. It's 14 minutes to 7. If you have questions, I'm here to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Public policy, public administration, um, I'm, you know, but the, 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 the economics part of it, you see, is a very imaginative subject to do if you know what to do with the study of economics. And so I could imagine, um, I could imagine, sorry, is Ryan there? Yes, okay. okay, let me tell him that he should go and attend to the man if he can. Okay. Yeah, I should tell the man he can go and attend to him where in Wuye. Well, you give me my phone back. So, um, so the, the economist part of it is where you think about, for example, the population of Nigeria, a growing population. Why are we not doing well with this population? Why are we not produce, providing for our people? Why are we not, um, you know, why are we not being able to feed our people? Why are we not able to put all our children in school? Why do we have 15 million children on the, on the street? And then what are the consequences of that? That is economics. What are the consequences of that? They are out of school. What does the future hold for them and for the country? You know, can we survive as a country having 15 million children out of school roaming all over the place? We're in trouble. Two lifetimes. Okay, and so if that's the case, I realize that, you know, whatever it is I could do, okay, on my own to offer the little ideas that I have, I needed to do it now and not postpone. Between then and now, COVID came. Between then and now, you know how many people have died, you know, friends of ours and so on, younger people, you know. So I'm this person, what I want to do today, I don't postpone. I'm a man in a hurry. And I always come to, I also optimize my time. And I'm talking to you now, this is the best place that I want to be, this place. If it wasn't, I won't come. Okay? I mean, our friends in town, we could be somewhere drinking or doing something else. They don't see me that often, but sometimes I also make more time for them. But I'm in total control of my time. I think that's one thing about working for yourself. You're in total control. In fact, what I wanted to say earlier was, one of the myths about working for yourself, for example, if you think, ah, this is my organic guy is giving me a problem. Every time he's calling me, I know. See, when you start and you're on your own, <laughs> Sometimes you wake up at 2 a.m. and you're not able to sleep. You'll be so worried. You'll be proposing something somewhere, trying, trying, trying. It'll be frustrating. You won't be there sometimes. Politics comes in. Sometimes it's politics. Sometimes it's tribalism, religionism, whatever. They've canceled that proposal. And you'll not be there. One of the things I learned, you know, so you, you, you find yourself, you are so worried, you know, even when you're on your own more than when you are working for. It's you that will enslave yourself when you are your own. Check it, your guy is enslaving you when you are working for somebody. When you are your own, you will enslave yourself. Hey, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You develop high blood pressure because you realize that, look, it's not like you are working in an office, you go to a camp and say, or HR say, I mean, can you give me advance? When you are on your own, when there's nobody to go and meet to collect advance, and you don't want to get into the habit of borrowing from friends. Borrow, 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 borrow. You want to see what you can do yourself with your own hands. You want to see the beginning and the end of transactions and see how much money, how much profit is going to come out at that point. And if you have staff, you have to think about them first. Because these people are paying 50, 50,000, 60,000. I must pay them first so before I think about myself. Why? Because all they get is that 60000 If you make a windfall, the windfall is for you, your company. But these people who have budgeted that this 70000 they collect every month, is all they have to stretch 
They have to enter bus and come to work on the, on that seventy thousand. They have to dress. They have to eat. After a while, in fact, you have to begin to think for them. Have, if if they work for you for long, you have to think about. Well, I think they need to get married. When they get married, they start having children. When they get children, they have to go to school. How much am I paying them? Can I grow this company so that I can pay them something that's substantial? Because again, one of the biggest problems we have in the entrepreneurial world today is how to get good talent and keep them. So when I see some of the guys that I'm talking about to, to today, they are the ones working for my God. You, you guys are very, you are very cerebral set of people. I wonder, this guy, he's trying. Whatever model it is, he's using to hold you guys down. It's tough to keep guys down. To hold guys and say, okay, just hang on a second, there's somewhere I'm going to. You must sell that dream to them or not just even to pay the salary. And there's something I wanted to say that, you know, I also realized something very quickly in business. My first business, when I came, well, my first break really, uh, so, so to speak, yeah, my first break was given to me by an eagle man who I never knew before, Mr. Sunny. I went to one organization in town here. You know, I was trying to do something with them locally. I didn't know that I could do that thing, even I could take them somewhere abroad. <sighs> so one day I went there, the guy said, okay, <laughs> okay, you two, you know they do this? I said, yeah, we do this thing now. You know, I didn't know what he was talking about, but I was just trying to get more information about it. And so I made a proposal. I wrote dollars. And then one day I was in Lagos, the guy calls me and I said, hey, that thing that you wrote dollars. Because that place wants to do that frog work in London, said they changed it from dollar to pound. And that was like doubling it at that time. You know, and that's Mr. Sani, he's a Zanigala man. Then when I wanted to actually give up earlier, the person that helped me was from Niger State. So I went and made a proposal in CBN. And, you know, I sent it to their HR and they told me to come back on social day. So I went back on that day to try and you know, know how far. They told me that the director had jumped that proposal. I said they don't need it. So I was distraught, you know. And I was on my way out when um, I said, well, let me even tell my friend. I had only one friend there, one guy called Joshua. Uh, you know, to tell him that this thing, because he knew when I was submitting that that thing didn't work. So I went into his department. I would say, oh, I'm looking for Joshua. I said, I ah, know. He's on the outside posting somewhere in maybe Bauchi or something. Okay, no problem. I turned back. I was going. One guy called me back and said, which bank do you work? He said, I was dressed in tie and suit and so I said, oh, this is from where, you know, in my head. He said, no, which bank do you work? I said, well, I used to work in a bank, but I don't work in a bank anymore. I gave him my card. He looked at it. He said, okay. I will turn back. I was going. He said, no, but, uh, sir, are you a chartered accountant? I said, yes, I'm a chartered accountant. So what did you do your studies? I said, safe in Sulere, in Lagos. Say, hey. Say, we were in the same class. Now, I have a fault, and I readily admit it. If I see any of you, any, it could be anybody, you know, I mean, I've forgotten your name, like, tomorrow. I mean, that's me. <laughs> you know, I mean, I forgot. Some people are very good at that. Tony Elumelu, my academic, that's why I knew, that was when I knew I was not going to be a billionaire. Because Tony Elumelu can see you 10 years from now, he still knows your name. He can interview, my academic can interview you today. And they also get, they like to interview everybody that comes to them. They will know you, they will know your name. They don't know your name. They say, no, I've seen you before. <laughs> see, this guy, when they, you say there's some training that they have to go for those sort of kind of things. Me, me, I'm a free spirit. <laughs> I empty it. Of course, if we've interacted after a while, yes, I will, I will know you and know your name, but you know. So this guy said, we are in the same class. I said, ah. I said, okay, sorry, you that. this is what I came for. So I said, don't mind those people. Come, 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 come. Sit down here. He took me to their waiting room. Say, wait. I want to go out and pray. It was one o'clock in the afternoon. When I finish prayer, we'll, we'll continue. I'll tell you what to do. It was a Muslim. So when you're doing business, one of the things you learn very quickly, if you are perceptive, is never discriminate. When we start talking about this one, I will start doing this one. I feel like, mm. now that feel like any man will help you pass. Not your brother. Yeah? <laughs> And of course, keep your mind open. In time, too, I got to a place where somebody will say, ah, yeah, you're Obama. Ah, you must get something here. You, 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 you get some places. Now, Igbo man will help you pass. So you find out that you have to judge people one-on-one -on, -one on how they are. They say Igbo man like money, Igbo man like money. When I went to Enugu in 2000 and 
10 or 11 or something. I remember I was ent I would enter taxi like this. The guy would not collect money and he said he doesn't have change. I should keep it. I said, ah, well, I keep what? There was one guy. He said, he dropped me at shop right in Enugu. He said, he will come back in the next 30 minutes. If I'm done, he will pick me up so that the remaining change, he can use it. He came back even before that time. I wrote an article on it now. I think I called it, I titled it an Eastern Renaissance, you know, way back. So forget stereotype, all those things that we used to name and brand ourselves. Most of the time, don't work. Deal with people one on one. That's one thing you are going to learn in business. So, why did I run for business, okay? Mr. Carlo? Mr. Kama Carlo, I can't hear that one. So, it was your own first name? Sam. Sam, Sam Carlo. Are you guys related? Okay, I just took both of them. Carlo just fully Sam. Carlo. Okay, okay, okay. Engineer Kama. No, that Kama is the. Is, is, is it a short form of something? No, Kama is the name of God. God? Is it K A R M A? K A M A. Is that, that's, that's God. It means God. Yeah. First time I'm hearing it. Wow. Okay, so that's why I run though. Because I know I have, well, I have the energy, I have the imagination. I've been writing, if you go online, perhaps I've written more than 3,000 articles, I've written 10 books. Okay, and I've been on TV so many times that in time that you've been using to chase money, now they take the right. They go on TV. <laughs> you know? But you know, I'm not poor, you know what I'm saying, but I'm not like exceedingly cash rich like that. If I had it, I'd be misbehaving. If I had too much money, I'd be thinking, mm, shouldn't I go to Panama and Malibu now and just go and chill in one? You know? No, too much money sometimes drives people crazy. Often times, even most times. So let's pray. As we're praying to God for money, that He should give us money that will not drive us mental. All right. So I believe that I would have done a whole lot better than this. And I probably foresaw that a day like this will come because the trouble we're in with these guys, the economy, and all of the problems that we have. So it's one of those things. You know, unfortunately, you guys didn't listen to me. I was busy. Campaigning, and I know nobody here voted for me. I forgive all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I know they run again. Maybe until 2027, who knows? But this one, I'm not running. Yeah. More questions? No questions. Everybody goes on. Well, I, I encourage people to get into politics, you know, if they can. It's a tough call, really. We have problems in this country, serious ones, and it's getting worse day by day, you know, especially because of the non leadership. Now, perhaps a parting shot, 95% of the work of leadership is communication now. Why? Why? 95% of the work of leadership is communication. Why? Because we live in an age of information. We live in the knowledge age, in the communication age. You're at every, you know the amount of things competing for your attention. Eh? When we were growing up, TV, Open at four o'clock or five o'clock. Yeah. You sit in front like this. Sometimes you make shh. You be still watching. Even I remember that. Even though shh, me, I used to see human beings running inside that shh. Then after a while, the cotton bars will come. Bars come up. So you make oh. You sit down. You are watching because you know your parents will come. When they come, they will pursue people from the room. Tell me, I can go to your room. <laughs> you watch enough TV. So there's that cartoon that will show. Or uh, one of these children show or uh, Sesame Street. Uh -huh. Your parents come home with the pursue all of you, you know? By eleven o'clock they read there's whole news they read at eleven. After they finish that news, they close and go they will sing national anthem. They will sing national anthem in the beginning. If you're a patriotic child, you have to stand up to attention in the beginning at four o'clock when they start rise oh compatriot oh Nigeria will you know? So well, look at it these days. Sometimes we blame our children. They say, hey, "Oh, this our children." They know they read the China Jebe. They know they read this one. Do you know the amount of information those children are possessing now? The amount of information. Look, they say anybody that's holding a normal phone today, you are getting twenty times the information that President Bill Clinton was getting as the president of U.S. when there was no mobile phone. You're getting 20 times. What are you doing with it? Everybody's on Twitter. You want to get the news as they break. What are you doing with that news as it breaks? Are you taking position in the, in the New York Stock Exchange or what? You know? 
You know, we, we are so much, you know, it's called information overload. And therefore, as a leader, whether you are leading a company, or you are leading your, your village meeting, or your family, your, 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 your challenge is how do you hold people's attention from all of this information? 300 channels on DSTV. Internet, you know, so much on internet. You're on Facebook, on Twitter, on WhatsApp. Look at WhatsApp. How many people can cope with all the information that's coming on WhatsApp? You can't get it all. All the groups that you belong, all the things that people are sharing. So the work of leadership is 95% information. And in information, there's what they call the power of repetition. The power of repetition, whatever it is, as a leader, hmm? that you want your followers to know. Hmm? Hmm? And a leader is that person that has at least one follower. If nobody is following you, you are not a leader. But no matter how hard you try, somebody is following you. You came here, you want to do mentor. Eh? You too, you are mentoring someone, whether you like it or not. Somebody is watching you say, hmm, this Jabu, when I grow up, this her gray long head is just what I want. <laughs> or they want to just be a visual artist like you, creating things. Are you the one that created these things? Yes, sir. Hi, wonderful. All right, so, so the work is, is, is communication, power of repetition. In order for you to, for that information to stick that you're trying to pass, you have to keep repeating. Remember what I said, eh? Say it again and again until it becomes part of that. All right? So basically that's it. I thank you very much, gentlemen and ladies, for listening. I think you've had a good day. Uh, God bless. I was free. Hmm? Okay, still for five minutes. Where?